Osteoarthritis or OA is a disorder which is characterized by progressive joint failure in which all the structures of the joint have undergone a pathologic change. The pathologic sign quantum of osteoarthritis is hyaline articular cartilage loss, which is accompanied by increasing thickness and sclerosis of the subchondral bone plate, outgrowth of osteophytes at the joint margin, stretching of the articular capsule, and weakening of the muscle bridging at the joint. There are numerous pathways that lead to osteoarthritis, but the initial step is often joint injury in the setting of a failure of a protective mechanism. Osteoarthritis is the most common type of arthritis, and the prevalence of osteoarthritis correlates striking with age and is much more common in women than in men. Joint vulnerability and joint loading are the two major risk factors contributing to the development of osteoarthritis. These are influenced by factors that include the age, female sex, race, genetic factors, nutritional factors, joint trauma, previous damage, malalignment, proprioceptive deficiencies and obesity. The earliest changes of osteoarthritis may begin in a cartilage and the two major components of the cartilage are the type 2 collagen which provides tensor strength and the agrican which is a proteoglycan. Osteoarthritis cartilage is characterized by gradual deletion of agrican and flaring of the collagen matrix and loss of type 2 collagen which leads to increased vulnerability. In the clinical features, osteoarthritis can affect almost any joint, but usually occurs on the weight-bearing and frequently used joints such as the knee, the hip joint, spine, and hands. The hand joints are the typically affected and distal interphalangeal joints, or the DIP, proximal interphalangeal joints, or first couple metacarpal, the thumb base. Metacarpal pharyngeal joint involvement is rare. The use related pain affecting one or a few joints. Stiffness after rest all morning may occur but is usually brief in less than 30 minutes. This loss of joint movement or functional limitation, joint instability, joint deformity, and joint crepitation with the cracking sound. On your physical examination, chronic monoarthritis or asymmetric oligopriarthritis may be present. These are firm or a bony swelling of the joint margins, such as the habitants rolls, which is the swelling on the distal interphalangeal joints or the butcher's nodes which are the swelling on the hand the proximal interphalangeal joints. The mid synovitis may occur but is uncommon. Crepitance is an audible creaking or cracking of joints as a passive or active movement. This deformity such as in osteoarthritis of knee may involve medial, lateral or patrofemoral compartments resulting in various or vulgar deformities. Restriction of movement such as limitation of internal rotation of the hip joint, objectiveness of neurologic abnormalities may be seen in spine involvement and may affect in the vertebral discs. The investigations, routine lab work is usually normal, and the erythrocyte sedimentation rate is usually normal but may be elevated in patients with synovitis. Dermatoid factor studies are negative, joint fluid is straw colored with a good viscosity. Fluid weight blood cell count is less than a thousand in a microliter of value to rule out crystal induced arthritis, inflammatory arthritis, or infection. Radiographs may be normal at first, but as the disease progresses, they may show joint space narrowing, subchondral bone sclerosing, subchondral cysts, and osteophytes. Erosions are distinct from those of rheumatoid and psoriatic arthritis. The diagnosis is usually established on the basis of pattern of joint involvement. Radiographic phages. The normal laboratory tests and synovial fluid findings can be helped with signs suggest of inflammatory arthritis. The differential diagnoses in osteoarthritis include osteonecrosis, charcoal joint, rheumatoid arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, and crystal induced arthritis. The goal of treatment is to alleviate pain and minimize loss of physical function. Non pharmacotherapeutic strategies aimed at altering Loading across the painful joint include patient education, weight reduction, appropriate use of the cane on other supports, isometric exercise to strengthen muscles around the affected joints, bracing or orthotics to correct malalignment. Topical capsaicin cream may help relieve hand or the knee pains. Acetaminophen or paracetamol common used analgesic, but you have to be cautious about hepatic toxicity. non steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs and Cyclooxygenase 2 inhibitors, which normally have gastrointestinal, renal, and cardiovascular toxicity, but must weigh individual risks and benefits. 
topical and steroid anti inflammatory drugs are few gastrointestinal and systemic side effects but can cause skin irritation. Opioid analgesics may be considered in selected patients whose symptoms are inadequately controlled with other measures and who cannot undergo surgery. Habituation is a potential concern. Intraticular glucocorticoids may provide symptomatic relief but typically for a short life period. Intraarticular hyaluron can be given for symptomatic knee and hip osteoarthritis but it is controversial whether it does efficacy beyond placebo. Glucosamine and chondroitin. Last key trials have failed to show efficacy for pain relief. Recent guidance recommend against the use. And systemic glucocorticoids have no place in treatment of osteoarthritis. Atroscopic debridement and lavage, whereby the randomized trials have shown no great effect for pain relief or disability compared to the sham procedure or no treatment. Joint replacement therapy may be considered in patients with advanced osteoarthritis who may have intractable pain.